Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you another part of the bookshelves and sewing um, shop room stuff. So this here we're going to do first. It's going to be very simple. This comes in the kit and it has a bunch of holes in it. Now these are laser cut so you're going to have to take a wet like baby wipe or a wet cloth and wipe off the burn marks. I've already done the front for you, but the back you'll have to do. Okay, so you have your legs and then you have your brace for your legs. And what you're gonna do is I'm take some super glue and you are going to take your brace for your leg and you're just gonna go right down or your leg, not your brace, I'm sorry. Right there like that. And then I'm gonna sandwich these two together just a little bit to get that crazy glue off of there so it's not so thick. And then I'm going to line it up with the edge. both sides after that you want to go ahead and put some crazy glue right along on three of the sides of this and then you want to slide that inside that bottom piece. And then you have your stand. Now for the next part of this, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see it. You have a couple options. You can get the little eye hooks and you can screw them in there. Or you can get yourself some dowels or skewers. And then you cut these to the length that you want. And you cut as many as you want. This does not come in the kit. You can just get those from your local store. I'm using my 3-in-1 multi-cut tool for this. It makes things so much simpler. And you can use a little saw to do this as well. I do not recommend you using an X-Acto knife though. An X-Acto knife can end up being very um, dangerous trying to cut these things. Or anything for that matter. Now I'm not going to do all of these, I'm just kind of give you an idea. I'm just going to cut this one little piece up for this and that will be it. Now you can put some crazy glue on there if you like, um, or you can just set them in there and then that way you can move them around when you want to move them for different things if you're going to put different things in there. And if you get the right size ones, they should fit pretty snug. So you just press them in and they kind of hold in place and then you pull them out with pliers. Now I'm using a hole puncher that is about one eighth inch round and it's going to be kind of close cutting to fit it on here so I'm kind of have to squish it on there a little bit but these are my printable um, patterns you can get those off my website dollhousetutorials.com and you can find them under there
and you can just put them however you want to do it but basically you get the idea and then there's how it would be and then it would sit up like that and it can be a display inside your store you don't have to use this for sewing you can use it for anything um, from like beads buttons jewelry you name it you can put pretty much anything on there once you do it because it's kind of like a pegboard only it's a lot smaller in scale and again you can get this pattern on um, or these templates they look like this on my website dollhousetutorials.com these are free to download they don't cost anything or anything like that and then um, this kit I'll leave the link below where you can get that if you want to order that kit off of my shop all right now we're going to go ahead and do a fabric shelf and I've already put it together and kind of gave you a little idea with part of it so you get an idea how easy it is so you're going to have a top and a bottom they both need to be facing the same way with either these on the right or these on the left it doesn't really matter but whatever way you start that's the way you need to have it now you're going to have three of these sides and then you're going to have a couple of little shelves you want to go ahead and put some glue on this with the pattern facing out and then you want to make sure that you have it square So hold it up with the little square. If you don't have the square tool set, you can also get that on my storefront. It's basically just a miniature set of square tools to make life a little easier. Now you want to have the pattern facing to the right of these. And then again, you want to square it up. Make sure it's in line there. Now, this one you want to have the pattern facing to the left because one side is pattern and the other side is not. Now for the next step, you want to go ahead and put glue here, here, and here across the top the same way we did the bottom. And this, it doesn't matter if you put the pattern up or down because we are going to end up putting a piece on top of it. Press it all down, make sure you have it nice and straight. You should have the hole showing through in the same exact spot. Just like that. Okay, so for the next part, you wanna go ahead and do the shelving in here and decide where you wanna put your shelving at. I like to go ahead and just set my shelving in there and I've given you a couple of shelves um, to choose how you want to do it so it's completely up to you what you do for the shelves you know in the kit it'll come with four I'm not going to use four I'm literally going to use two to hold it and then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to hold it in place with that and then Move them out of the way just slightly so that it doesn't end up doing anything. And you can put another shelf in if you like. But I don't know. I kind of like it like it is, to be honest with you, with just the two. I might put one up a little higher. I might do that once that dries. So let that set up for a minute. And 
and see what it looks like and then we'll decide. I guess that doesn't look bad. You could use it for scissors or something in there. So I'll add that in there. I'm going to apply the glue the same way I did the other one. And I note, you want to make sure you're wiping your edges as well when you're doing your um, cleanup of the wood. Try not to get crazy glue on there. If you're painting it, it won't matter, but if you're not painting it, it will matter. All right, after you've done that, the next step is to glue the bottom on. Again, you wanna have the pattern facing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some crazy glue here, and crazy glue will pretty much stick almost instantly. So you need to be um, very careful when using crazy glue. If this is your first time doing um, kits, I would recommend that you use wood glue and just wait it out. And for this one, I'm using a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of crazy glue. The crazy glue gives me the fast set and the wood glue gives me the long hold. And it also allows me to have a little bit more time to work with that, to square it up around the edges. This is 1 8 inch thick, so I'm just kind of putting it along the edge to make sure that I've got it nice and even all the way around 1 8 inch. And that's just a spacer tool. All right, so for this next part, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. You're going to be wrapping fabric, okay? And you're going to put one drop of crazy glue or wood glue, whatever it is that you're using inside there. And actually, I'm going to use wood glue for this part just because it's a little thicker and it'll hold it in there longer. Right, after that, you want to wrap your fabric around one of the skewers or wooden dowels. And then you want to put it in there put the top in first and then drop it down into the bottom and make sure you get it down in that hole and then the top should look like that you want to wrap your next thing of fabric and I have found that wrapping the fabric tends to work out really really nicely um, if you take the fabric and you cut it so here, let me fold this. And I cut it just a tiny bit shorter than my dowel by about a quarter of an inch. Once you have it cut, you can go ahead and put a little bit of crazy glue along your edge or fabric glue that'll stick to wood. Either one works. Once you have that, then you want to go ahead and just roll it. And you can roll it loosely because it doesn't need to be tight. And I doubled it up so that I didn't have to do so many rolls. And I'm not gluing it all the way down. Because 
because I want to have it hanging off the edge. Now, if you want these to spin, don't put glue in there. Me, I'm kind of happy with them sitting still. All right, so you want to repeat that process all the way through the rest. Okay, so once you have all of your fabric lined in there, you need to make sure they're all down in the hole and none of them are sticking up like this one here. Because if it's sticking up, then the next part isn't going to work. They have to be flushed straight across the top. Now once you have that done, then you want to add some glue to the top. And then you want to line that up with the pattern on top. And then once you line it up, oh, make sure they don't fall out on you. Like that one just did. Make sure you sandwich it together very tightly when you switch it over. Otherwise, it's not going to line up that well. Make sure you have your tool to line it up to get the 1 8 inch all the way around and stop lifting it. Make sure you have it lined up where it's 1 8 inch all the way around. Press down on it to make sure you get it good and tight. And there you have your little countertop. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is how to do the shelving unit and the shelving unit is going to be different than the one that I did before in teal. It's going to be a little bit fancier, but it's going to be a lot easier to put together. So um, watch out for the next video, but in the meantime, this here, you can find the link below for it and there you go. Also one more thing, if you want to paint it, paint it beforehand. I kind of like the wood look this but um it's all up to your preference thanks a lot leave a like below and a comment question or suggestion and i will see you in the next video have a wonderful wonderful day